How to Buy a Husband Chapter 1 My name is Lime Harrington Lynch. I'm 35 years old. I have straight brown hair, large, alert, violet eyes, and are long lashes. My best feature, so I'm told, are my good teeth. I know I'm not pretty, and I'm certainly no beauty, but I really have no desire to be beautiful. I see all the work it takes. Although, when I'm pushed to make an effort on my appearance, I will do so, provided it doesn't take up too much of my time. This is my story. You may think it's slightly unusual, or you may not, but growing up, I didn't know my life was not like everyone else's. It was all I knew. As you may have guessed by the title of this book, I bought my husband. Yes, I did. And to a point, it worked. I'll tell you how it happened and how it ended, but first, a little more about me. As you know, my name is Lime. There's only my father and myself. Our main residence is in the affluent city of Westlake in Texas, although Daddy has many homes around the world, along with two private jets in which to travel. One jet is solely for business use for himself and his executives, while the other is for our personal use. As you may have guessed, I am an only child. I don't mind. I've never known it any other way. Although, as you can imagine, it does put all the responsibilities and expectations squarely on my shoulders. And with a father who's one of the richest oil barons in America, it is a lot of responsibility. My mother was the beautiful socialite Jennifer Harrington. She was a petite, auburn-haired beauty. To me, she was the most beautiful lady I had ever seen. I know it took her a lot of time to remain beautiful, but she was dedicated to her beauty. I'd watch everyone stop when she entered a room. I saw the way men looked at her, but always Daddy would shine with more admiration than them all. He would glow with pride when she was around. You may have noticed I sadly speak of her in the past tense. I was just 12 years old when she died. It was a most unfortunate age for any girl to lose her mother. It was unexpected, sudden, and tragic, as most deaths are. My father never spoke of what actually caused her death. He shut himself away in his suite of rooms for more than two weeks. No one saw him or spoke to him. I was left on my own to grieve, however I could. I'd often sit outside his closed double doors crying, and I believed I could hear him sobbing inside his rooms as well. Or maybe I just wanted to think that. He was not a man to show weakness of any sort, but like me, I know her passing hit him hard. So I grew into a teenager. When I needed guidance, I would remember all the things she told me, the many things that at the time didn't seem important, but in my teenage years, I'd look back and try to remember her words. They suddenly seemed vitally important. By the time I entered my 20s, I realized that being a beauty was hard work and maybe I didn't want to be one after all. I possessed neither her good looks nor persistent motivation. The constant criticism from my father was also a major reason why I decided to just be me. My life unfolded like an empty diary, something you held dear and keep close, but upon opening it you realize the pages are almost blank. Each day or so there is an entry, something superficial about where I went or what I did, who I met or the parties I attended but each page contained a lot of blank, empty space on which there was no words, no thoughts, and no emotions shared. The emptiness of my diary was indeed like the emptiness of my heart. I didn't want my innermost thoughts to be felt, seen, or written. I didn't want to show the depth of my emptiness, my despair, anguish, desperation, or depression. Late at night, I would lay alone in my huge bed, safely in my bedroom in the dark. There was only me. Me alone by myself with my thoughts and dreams. Alone, wrapped in my raw desperation, solitude, and fear. My need was so deep, I never wanted to allow it out. I never wanted to meet it, to feel it. So I focused instead on the blank and empty solitude inside of me. It was a familiar place. That place was my only true friend, a place I happily receded to. There was nothing there. It was a void. A deep, dark, heavy hole of nothing. But I guarded that place. It was precious to me. More precious than anything I possessed. It was my deep, dark, solitary void of nothing. 
and with it I could do whatever I choose, create anything I wished, and in my world I could be anyone I wanted to be. As I lay in my bed at night, I felt safe and secure. It was a time that was mine, all mine, and I treasured every minute. But time was not my friend, and right now, it was proving so more than any other time in my life. My clock was ticking, and had from the moment I was born. Judgment Day was looming, and it was getting very close. Over time, things changed, and these changes had been sneaking up on me for years. I knew they were lurking, but suddenly my time had run out. I was 35 years old, and my time had run out. Maybe I sound melodramatic, but it's how I'm feeling. That awful feeling when your life is closing in and you know without a doubt changes are afoot. Daddy's deadline was upon me, and what Daddy wanted, he got. Several weeks before my 35th birthday, which was another reason for him to throw a gigantic party, another social event here in Texas to which all the rich and famous were invited, I confronted him. I asked, begged, and conjoled him for more time to find a husband. He wanted an heir. It was the one requirement of me he had made very plain over the years, and it was the one thing he would never back down on. My whole adult life, he had told me he wanted a grandson, or perhaps now he'd even settle for granddaughter. He wanted this child to be presented to him before I was 35. He would choose my husband after that time if I could not. And my time was up. The ticking of the clock had proved my enemy, and now my time had run out. But before I continue on, let me tell you about my father. He's the reason I need an empty void, a place of safety to recede into at night. Conrad Lynch, or Lynn to his friends, is a force to be reckoned with. He stands over six foot tall, but he looks shorter due to his stocky build. With shoulders as wide as barn door and legs the size of tree trunks, he has a solid, muscular body. It has always been so. I don't know why, since I've known him, he's never done a day's manual work in his life, and lifting a whiskey glass to his lips is the entire extent of his daily exercise. However, at 60 years of age, he is strong, very strong physically and mentally. He built his empire from nothing. Nothing but sweat and luck, that is. He is single-minded in all he wants and nothing gets in his way. His empire is built on oil. He is a genuine oil baron and one of the richest. Forget the old oil barons like J.D. Rockefeller or J. Paul Getty. Conrad Lynch is even richer and more successful than the legendary Harold Zinn Lafayette, who died in 1974. Conrad Lynch's riches have long surpassed Rex Tillerson of ExxonMobil and James Mulva of ConocoPhillips. Conrad Lynch sits at the very top of the ladder, and at present he is slightly richer than Harold Hamm, the founder and CEO of Oklahoma Resources. Harold Hamm, like Conrad Lynch, holds the ruins of his company tightly while he retains ownership of over 75% of company stock. At 64 years of age, Harold Hamm is four years older than Daddy, but in power and dollars, they are well matched. However, I don't know how Harold Hamm reached such heights of success, nor do I know him well, but I know Daddy well, and he is devious, cunning, street smart, and single-minded. Lynch Oil is almost entirely owned by him. I hold a few shares, of course, as do some of his executives, but he keeps control by retaining a high percentage of shares. He also holds full ownership of Lynch Transport, Lynch Media, and shares 51% ownership to my 49% of Lime Hotels and Resorts. Supposedly, Lime Hotels and Resorts is my baby to run as I please, although on closer inspection you would see he handles and oversees everything concerning the resorts and I am merely told what to do and when. He plays his hand well and uses me as the front person, so I appear to be the power behind the wealth and success of the Lime Resorts and Hotels, when in fact no one but Daddy holds the power. I know no one ever will, not while he lives. 